Today I'm going to share with you the second half of Matthew chapter 5. And it's worth remembering the context for that. So this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which starts at the beginning of Matthew 5. And Jesus starts out talking about his upside down kingdom, this radical new kingdom that he's bringing. And then he goes on to tell his followers that, that we need to be salt and light, that our lives need to be so full of integrity and purity and righteousness. And that when they are like that, the kingdom of God shines through, it pours through and isn't just a blessing to us, but a blessing to everyone around us. And then he begins to unpack the how of how to do that, how to shine. And he starts out teaching about anger, and then he says this. Your ancestors have been taught never commit adultery. But I say to you, if you look with lust in your eye upon the body of a woman who is not your wife, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Now, if your right eye seduces you to fall into sin, then go blind in your right eye. You're better off losing sight in one eye than to have your whole body thrown into hell. If your right hand entices you to sin, then let it go limp and useless. You're better off losing a part of your body than to have it all thrown into hell. You know, it's been said, if a man divorces his wife, he must give her legal divorce papers. But I say to you, anyone who divorces his wife for any reason other than infidelity, he causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now again, your ancestors were taught, never swear an oath you don't intend to keep, but keep your vows to the Lord God. But I say to you, don't bind yourself by swearing an oath at all. Don't swear by heaven, for heaven is where God's throne is placed. And don't swear an oath by the earth, because it is the rug under God's feet, and not by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And why would you swear by your own head, when it is not in your power to turn a single hair white or black? But just let your words ring true. A simple yes or no will suffice. Anything beyond this springs from a deceiver. Your ancestors have also been taught, take an eye in exchange for an eye and a tooth in exchange for a tooth. But I say to you, do not repay an evil act with another evil act. So whoever insults you by slapping you on the right cheek, turn the other to him as well. If someone is determined to sue you for your coat, give him the shirt off your back as a gift in return. And should people in authority take advantage over you, do more than they demand. Learn to generously share what you have with those who ask for help and don't close your heart to the one who comes to borrow from you. Your ancestors have also been taught, love your neighbor and hate those who hate you. But I say to you, love your enemy. Bless the one who curses you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you and respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. For that will reveal your identity as true children of your heavenly Father. He is kind to all by bringing sunrise to warm and rain to refresh whether a person does what is good or evil. What reward do you deserve if you only love the lovable? Don't even the tax collectors do that? How are you any different from others if you limit your kindness only to your friends? Don't even the ungodly do that. But since you are children of a perfect heavenly father, you are to be perfect like him. Can you hear the flow of thought going through the scripture? Can you hear the love that is saturated in it? Can you hear how Jesus is calling us to attend to our heart condition? 
that the law is so fundamentally important, but it's our heart condition as we obey it. It's the only thing that really counts to God. May we all grow in our love of reading the word of God.